three things. It is time for me to visit the next star system in the vast galaxy of our masters. But before that, I want to show my starship uh, with the last update. Ah, Captain, I'm glad you're back. This will really help, Captain. Goodbye, Captain. We come in peace. Remote probe program to replicate. With our data. Contact alien species priority override. New behavior dictated. Must break target into component materials. Go, 
it is easier with the tunic than the second one more. We also need some things for the back. This is what we need.
The humans chose the latter option, and so were swiftly imprisoned on the surface of Earth. But the Earth one didn't have them to obey the restrictions. So, they chose a small group of hierarchy combat starships from the Inlet and Spartan fleets to create the so-called Earth Guard and station them at a base on Earth's moon. <laughs> Originally, we were stationed on Earth's moon, which made us spatty a bit uneasy, because with each passing day, we grew more and more worried about the sneaky Earthlings making a surprise attack. But the Inred kept telling us that it was impossible, since the Earthlings had no ships or weapons whatsoever. That made us feel a bit better, but when the Ilrath left, again we grew fearful, and decided to make a strategic redeployment to Mars. Later on we decided it would be prudent to relocate to Jupiter's moon, Ganymede, then later Saturn's moon, Titan, and finally here to Pluto. The Ilrath contingent were supposed to be the toughest ridge crest, er, uh, the most rigid flipper, no, ah uh, yes, the backbone of the Earth Guard Force. But they departed the system on the mass not long after the last Earth Arm dreadnought vanished from this region of space. They claimed to have received a direct order from their gods of evil and darkness, who had grown dissatisfied with the Inrath's passivity and wanted them to kill, or at least, torture someone soon. Personally, I believe they just got bored and went off to have some fun. <laughs> Well, when they were pushing up into hyperspace 18 years ago, we asked them that very question, and I think they said something to the effect of... Real soon. <laughs> we decided that if the Earthlings figured out we had abandoned the base on the Luna, they would be more likely to try something sneaky. So, we rigged up some old service androids and ordered them to drive around on the lunar surface in bulldozers, endlessly pushing around the same piles of dirt. In addition, we connected the base's local radio transmitter to an audio Melnorme fun rum called Winky's Happy Night, hoping they would think we were still there. <laughs> Over the past years, it became necessary to redeploy strategically some of our earth guard forces to our homeworld in case of a sudden surprise attack by a vicious, unrelenting alien race which we spotty call the ultimate evil! <laughs> Thousands, that is to say, scores, and perhaps even hundreds of my brethren stride through the corridors of this specially modified, super-efficient, mass destruction-oriented starship, which could lay seeds to an entire planetary system, should we choose to do so, which, fortunately for you, we have decided not to do today. <laughs> I am undone! You are far too clever for a poor stuffy like me, and now I must submit to your superior alien intellect. I guess I am not revealing any truly important secrets if I tell you that each of my species in lunar class void ships typically holds 30 stuffy crewmen, so at present my vessel, the Star Runner, is not up to full complement due to the needs of my homeworld in their resistance against the alternate evil. And in fact, my vessel is somewhat understaffed right now, seeing as how I am the only spotter on board, which is a bit threatening, as I am sure you can understand. How true, Captain, how true! In truth, just between us, during the past seven years, I have been quite ill at ease, and yet now I find myself enjoying your company. This witty dialogue and the presence of your huge, powerful, death-dealing starship, which, being my friend, you would certainly feel compelled to use in order to save me from any hostile life forms who threatened me with death. <laughs> 
I get the ultimate evil that remains largely unmanifest, and its powers and exact intentions are still a bit obscure, since it lurks just outside the range of even the most sensitive long-range detectors, which we feel gives conclusive evidence as to the ultimate evil's nefarious intent. Since it was our most powerful and unforgiving master, the Orphan, who stationed us here, we knew it would be grossly stupid to disobey them completely, but we decided it would be okay to send just one ship home. We used one of our most ancient and solemn rituals, Hoon Tuffy, to pick the lucky ship. Then, some months later, we decided that it wouldn't really hurt if we sent one more ship home. And then later we sent another, and then another. Well, you get the idea. Alas, as fate would have it, when the final ritual was performed, I, for Riffle, was left here alone. For, as even the most immature in wrestling knows, there must always be one spotter who puts the short top from stick. <laughs> Our masters don't really keep us very well informed about their goings on. So that all we know is that immediately after the subjugation of the last alliance race, the Yehat, I think, the Earth One gathered their dreadnoughts and departed from the edge of the galaxy, commanding us to obey the slave laws or fix their wrath when they returned. Oh. Happy days and jubilation! I discard all prejudice and hesitation and accept and celebrate your offer of protection and your undying commitment to my well-being. I must wax melancholy for just a moment though. And make sure you understand that any other spotty ships we meet at large in the galaxy are not going to be quite so responsive to your friendly gestures as myself. Since they bear more heavily the yoke of Urquan enslavement and are also apt to talk themselves out of a line with a totally unknown alien, which I, having been left here alone, cannot do. Welcome me aboard, Captain. So, if you move up to this small party, ships, and you go on top, you will need us. And it gets zero, one of thirty. Oh, no, no. Oops. Oh, I think I can put more people there. And um, uh, so I will go to the twelve at the station. And we will continue to the next star system. So we find this part of the future. So, I'll check the name. Let's check the name. This robot is completely new here. Good to see you again, Captain. The more minerals you bring us, Captain, the faster we'll be able to tackle the Urquan. Blow up an Urquan for me, Captain. Oh, 
So this is for now, and thanks for watching. Now we, our mouse is here.